Hello. Hi, Jenna. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome. Hello, hello. How's everyone saying? How are you? Thanksgiving was great. Wow, Cindy, both Zooms. You're amazing. She was just on the yoga course. Wow, you're yeah, dead. I haven't, figured, <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet, Cindy. I'm still working on that. That's this awesome. is like the first. This is a total day of self-care because <laughs> I'm going to yin when okay, we're done good. with all this. Well, of course, <laughs> exactly. it's impossible to not find correlations between the month of Kislev and or any spira that we're doing like there's so many correlations with the month's energy so it's really cool back to back like you may notice some of the themes like we I just realized during the yoga flow um, that at, so rainbows come after Heshvan after the flood there's a promise of of peace and the the symbol of peace is the rainbow that's the that what Hashem gave as a symbol of peace um this rainbow which is the keshet and that's the zodiac of kislev the keshet in hebrew it's called rainbow and if you study the water cycle uh um, in the dance of the omer the each sphira is connected to a a stage in the cycle so hold, and hopefully we'll get to it, is the, um, the stage of rainbows and mists and rain and fog and any, anything with a reflective quality. So it's really cool that that just lines up with the month of Kislev. Natalie, you were also just at the yoga. Um, so how cool is that, that we have the rainbow of Keshet in the zodiac, Kislev, and it's also the connected to the sphera of Hod, um, which is all about reflection and um, reflecting light. So here, I'm gonna share my screen. Here we are on the left side. And Hod is basically a more mature, refined form of Gevura. So it's on this left column, Hod is, inward focus, whereas Netzach last week was all about propelling forward and going for our goals and motivation and victory and endurance going forward, Hod is about stepping back. And in that process of stepping back, we can witness the beauty that we have created in our life. It's, um, it's, we're, whereas Netzach has a lot of ego involved because it's a lot about like yourself and moving yourself. Hod is about relinquishing the ego, removing oneself to create a vessel, a space for another and to create space for life itself. So it's very much of a holding and it's very much of a receiving, a receiver. So that's sort of the left column. You can see that it comes right down from Gavura. And you, I, I really think if, um, if you think of a therapist and how they hold space for someone, that process of holding space and being a vessel, kind of re removing yourself from the picture, that is the process of hold. And here are some of the buzzwords for hold we have surrender it's often translated as submission but it's I really don't like that word I think of it more as like holding space uh, we see the root of hold is connected to hoda'a which means gratitude and so it's also divine providence that we're coming into the week of hold from thanksgiving because gratitude is about humbling oneself and opening opening up to something greater so and also the word for turkey in hebrew is hodu which is 
perfect. Thanksgiving is such uh, is so connected to this element of hod. And it's also divine providence that it's also connected to Kislev because there's a, a segula, it's an auspicious time in Kislev to refrain from complaining from the new moon all the way through the month. And that creates a vessel for miracles. So um, every time you feel the need to complain, there's a teaching to just insert uh, praise and words of gratitude. So Hod is really connected to this month of Kislev, which is really cool. Um, so whereas Netzach is forward movement, Hod is stepping back. And in terms of like relationships, we, Ari Kaplan talks about Netzach is giving so much that you're dominating someone. If you can think of a relationship where it's like one person is overwhelming the other, that is like an excess of hold uh, of netzach. It's almost to the extent where the other person loses their personality and doesn't have any voice in a relationship. That's too much netzach. On the flip side, too much hold would be so much submission that you lose your sense of self and your voice and you are completely overwhelmed by another. So a healthy balance, of course, is, is a, an integration of both, of being able to voice yourself and to give to the other, but give in a way that's not overwhelming them and, and causing them to lose who they are. Does anyone have a, know a relationship that has like an excess of one or the other, or possibly is in one that has excess amount of netzach or hod? If you change, if you give some to someone so much, you're changing them, and then you they lose their sense of self. That's like excess chesed, or chesed with that actually changes them, which is into netzach. Does anyone have an example of like a relationship that, like that? I don't have one that has too much of one, but I would say that I think good relationships really open up space between partners, so that you may have a plan and you have a lot of nets off going towards that. But if you have enough hode to see your own humility and the other person, which I think really is a, another characteristic of hode is being able to reflect and see others, um, you can cultivate that space to be more flexible. And so I think that good relationships, the best relationships I have, both partners have enough space to step back from their nets off and allow a little bit of hold for that relationship to flourish. And so right. it's, it's an active, um, I think it's an active mindset. Um, but I think that it's one that we can all cultivate by just like almost imagining that we're creating space within ourselves, which also correlates with Kislev because there's so much trust and support with Hashem always being there and you have to create space within yourself to even allow for <clears throat> possibilities. So it's almost like by just thinking about cultivating that space, our relationships can almost heal themselves by our effort to um, nurture them. Right. Um, so same with every moment, there's netzach in a moment and there's hod in a moment. So. Netzach would be, you're trying to change the moment and force something and change the energy, propel in some way. Hod is just stepping back and appreciating the moment as it is and just relinquishing control and witnessing what's going on. Just being a part of the experience, that's more connected to Hod. So let's go into the body part. Um, netzach and Hod are the two legs and the two feet. And we touched upon this last week, but this the movement of walking balances out our netzach and hod naturally. And Rabbi Arya Kaplan teaches about this, that every time we're stepping forward, in a way we're conquering the earth, we're stepping on it, we're going towards our goal, we're taking a step in the direction we want. That's like netzach, right foot, going forward, moving. And hold is like the retreat, the like, in a way, when you're stepping on the ground, you're also stepping into humility. You're also stepping into surrender. 
So you're going forward, but you're also stepping down and retreating. And it's this balance of Netzach and Hod that we want to go for our goals and we want to be driven in life, but we also want to step back and relinquish control. And so that's what the, the feet represent, the, the legs. And of course, we have the famous um, Hasidic insight of Ratzo Veshu, running and returning. And running and returning is connected to Netzach and Hod. There's the famous prophecy of Ezekiel, who saw the Hayot, like the angels running and returning. And also in this week's Parsha, in Yaakov's ladder, Yaakov had a dream and he saw the ladder and he saw angels running and returning. And um, Hasidus teaches that the running is like Netzach. It's like, we're going somewhere, we're praying, we're, we're like moving, we're aspiring for heights, we're like working on ourselves, but the angels also have to retreat and return to a low place. And that is the movement of Hod is going downwards to a low place. So same with like we talked about in the movement in yoga, going from the, the mat upwards, spiraling up is very like Netzach, the running aspect, and Netzach being above us. And Hod is coming downwards, down to the low place and coming below to the Lamata, which is the low place, the low place of Hod. And that's the returning. Oh, Jenna. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So I'm thinking about things that you were saying with the walking. And if you think about it also like the highest level of walking um, developmentally is when you're walking with your right leg forward and then your left hand and switching. And that's interesting also thinking about, you know, when you're walking with hold, but having the chesed. So you're not just standing completely at the hold back, but you're also giving, but not you're giving, not giving like a kind of like a strong, like a netzach, just like with the chesed. So it's an interesting like combination of when you're walking. Right, like that balance. Actually, the, right. um, the person who founded EMDR, which is a very somatic type of therapy that uses bilateral stimulation, which is like right side, left side, right side. It's very healing with like creating an equilibrium. She founded it through walking. She realized the balancing and how it brought her so much healing back to center. And that's how she like started the, to create EMDR, which is, which is really cool. So this, this time of Netzach and Hod and just walking on our day, like day to day, it's just balances us in equilibrium. And we can use it on our yoga mats, like walking to the front of the mat and being very mindful about your feet going to the front of the mat and walking to the back of the mat and letting it be a healing practice, not just like I have to get from point A to point B, but the whole process of shifting from Netzach to Hod, Netzach to Hod. Even the pedaling, I think of the feet and down dog is a place like you can play with like your energy and even sinking into the, the heels, allowing like to infuse yourself with more, you know, is a nice place to also like sprinkle that in. Right. And so we, we see like in the divine cube that Netzach is above us and that brings us like power and endurance and Hod is below us, this like low orienting place that's very, brings us humility naturally by just looking down. And what's very humbling about this low place in the sacred cube, the down place, and it's very we're, we're here in this down place often in yoga, like on the ground, on the mat, facing downwards more so than in our usual day to day. Um, but Adam was formed from the earth, the very primordial human. And even the word Adam comes from Adama, which is earth. And so the earth naturally reawakens our humble beginnings because the earth is where we were created from. And also it's where we will return to after our death. So being close to the earth and looking at the earth and feeling the earth naturally brings us back 
to that place of humility. Like, wow, I have this brief life. I was created from the earth. I'm going to be buried in the earth in not so long. And I, I only have this fleeting life. It brings us a lot of humility. And that's um, the practice of hode. Um, Benji in his book says that hode is about the nurturing soil beneath us. And it's about a low place, be, becoming low in ourself, feeling the lowliness in ourself, but also physically connecting to the low place of the earth. So one practice we could do through this week is take off our shoes as much as possible and feel the ground beneath us. And even when Moshe approached the burning bush, Hashem says, take off your shoes because you're, you're standing on holy ground. And right away, like that removing barriers, removing the rigidity between and all of those perceived layers between us and our birthplace and where we will die, like removing those layers and feeling the feet on the earth is uh, really humbling and also nurturing. Okay, this is a really interesting quote about the, the proper way to pray. And prayer is of all the sphero connected to hod the most because hoda'a, it's it means acknowledgement. It's about humbling ourselves. And so this is really interesting from the Rambam. Does someone want to read it? Because it's very just off. The, the posture we should take during prayer. I'll read it. What is the proper posture that one's body should take during prayer? When one stands in prayer, he should place his feet side by side. He should set his eyes downwards as if he is looking at the ground and his heart upwards as if he is standing in heaven. His hand should be resting on his heart with the right hand clasped over the left hand. He should stand like a servant before his master. He should not rest his hands on his hips. So I think this is <clears throat> right, right away, just looking at the earth and how the earth is also humbles us because we are walking on all of our, all of the lives of our ancestors. And we're looking down and remembering that every being that has ever lived is beneath us under the feet and we're walking upon their life. And there's so many layers to the humility that the earth brings. So I, I think it's amazing that halacha brings this as a posture of prayer. Our heart should be lifted towards heaven, but our eyes should be facing downwards towards the low place. Um, so here's some ways to orient ourselves downwards during this week, like for just embodying this earthly low place is paying attention to the feet. We'll get there, but the body part, um, I mean, the body part of Hoda is the left foot. So coming into the feet brain, as T.S. Little calls it, right? We have a brain in our head, but we also have a feet brain, a consciousness in the low feet that has totally um, absorbs different information, especially when you're barefoot, you absorb information through your feet. So walking barefoot as much as you can, setting your feet on the ground and really soaking up the earth with your feet is a very hold practice. Just so fun and easy, right? Even if you're at your desk at work, you can simply take off your shoes and be like, I'm connecting to hold and bringing in some humility. Um, looking down often when you pray, but also just walking, looking at the earth, um, observing the rain. So the rain is connected to hold because it's reflective, just like rainbows and fog, and especially how the rain lands in the earth and is soaked in the ground. It's very... Um, it annuls itself. It's being absorbed into the earth. 
And that's what hold is. It's like removing, it's removing yourself and being some being available to be completely different. It's like rain that falls into the earth. Standing on the low place. <clears throat> and instead of sitting on a high chair, trying to sit as low to the ground as possible. So whether that's like on a pillow, on a low stool on the ground, or like sitting on the ground when you work or when you're doing things like just being lower towards the ground. And then also feeling any anywhere in your body that feels the weight of gravity and letting it sink downwards in the yoga posture, but also just when you're when you're seated, you could feel the heaviness of the hips, the thighs sinking down, the feet heavy on the earth. So all of these are just very subtle um, cues that you could give yourself to attune to hold. Does anyone have any anything that they could add to this? Connecting to the low place. The Lamata. Okay, so let's move to some um, hold yoga. It's it's all about bringing in humility and witnessing life, witnessing others, removing ourselves. So humble warrior is like the best one that I could possibly think of because you feel it so much like bowing and looking at the ground and like falling towards the ground and also feeling the feet on the, on the mat, which is very netzach and hod. Um, so this is like my favorite hod posture, but also laying flat on the ground in a full body prostration with the whole front body just sinking into the earth. That is brings so much feeling of humility and connecting to the low place. And also sometimes connecting to the low place is connecting to the low feelings in yourself and the, and remembering the low places that you've been in life, like remembering your smallness, remembering like the hard things in life. And that's sometimes like feeling that we need to lay on the earth to actually allow those feelings to come up because we're also supported by the earth beneath us. So full body prostration is like very healing and it brings out a lot of, of um, surrender. Those are the two big ones. Um, Self-massage I thought would be really nice on the feet in butterfly pose, especially because you're, you have the nets off and hold feet and while you're massaging yourself in your feet, you can witness the beauty of, of you. And hold is a lot about witnessing the beauty in others, but of course we also have to witness the beauty in ourselves first. Hold is like stepping back and being like, wow, I'm amazing. And um, loving ourselves, massaging ourselves. Also because it's the left side, Coming from Gavura, it's a very inward focused spira. So Gavura and Hod, they're more inward focused. So self-massage is the perfect way to like direct that towards yourself. Does anyone do this to themselves? Like massage your own feet? It feels really nice. Yeah, there's a lot of shiatsu techniques with the feet with you that you can incorporate in yoga with like pulse points and it's fun to play with that <clears throat> so bowing is also a very hold practice and even when we bow during the prayers at modi'im uh, we go modima nakhula and then we then we come up again so we're bowing and then we're rising again so it's very much like nets it's very much like going into hold and then lifting up to netzach and it's a very humbling feeling to like physically bow and remember everything we're grateful for and remember the grandeur of Hashem, the magnificence of creation and humble ourselves down. Um, also any bowing type of posture like forward fold or child's pose where your spine is like in a bowing posture. I would, if you're doing a flow connected to hold, I would just hold that for longer and really accentuate those like forward folding bowing postures. 
And a lot of people find like have a, don't like talking about bowing in Torah, especially religious people. They're like bowing, like we don't do that. But it's actually a lot of it's connect. It's we see it everywhere in the Torah. It, it even says somewhere like Abraham fell on his face, like often. It says about um, the patriarchs that they like fell on their face. It means like they bowed in so much humility. They just were overcome with like hode and and bowing often you can see in the Torah. So I love this quote. It says, but through your abundant love, enter your house. I bow down in awe at your holy temple. So I would just encourage you guys and all of us to bow throughout the week, to bow in prayer, to bow to our loved ones and like notice the energetic shifts that take place in the body. Thoughts, questions? Here's um, I also, oh, yes. go ahead, Jenna. Go ahead. I was gonna say I also feel that even in postures, any of the warriors, by almost focusing on like the the center, like the pelvis and grounding it <clears throat> down, you can also feel that pull if you're um in your practice and you're looking for other places to connect. I was really focusing on that as I was thinking about Hode and it felt like a different posture instead of thinking about the legs, really thinking of the center, reaching down, feeling that downward pull and that downward energy of humility. And so it was another place I was able to really think about it. Oh, I love that. Also in every pose, especially standing poses, you can feel <clears throat> the downward pull of Hode and then the upward pull of Netzach and how that creates a, such an amazing feeling in the body. Right. Like and then I think there's, yes, yes. And then I think the softness of Hode is another place where even like a downward dog or a, a plank or pl places where they're generally like very strong poses, more net sock by just infusing like the idea of softness in the way that you're holding it or the way that you're walking or moving in it um, allows Hode to really be in any posture just by thinking of softening. So I think that was another place I had fun exploring. Right. And what Ami is referring to is um, hold can also be translated as like, not translated, one of the meanings is a soft glow. So I think bringing that soft glow into any, any posture in yoga or just how we do things in our day to try to bring that soft glow to it. And it's hard to explain it, but you can feel it when it happens. Um, I, I think that when we do poses like our warrior poses where we're so grounded into our feet and even mountain, any of those grounded poses, we tend to draw our shoulders up to our ears and to be able to relax and to let go of those, of our shoulders brings that balance to that pose, you know, that, that ease and the effort. Um, and so I think that that is the hold element that, um, I know like when I practice this week, I'm going to, when I, you know, cue or I hear the cues, relax your shoulders. I'm going to um, be thinking about that. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. And we kind of mentioned this, but any like downward pull. So if you're starting in mountain and you're going down into a forward fold, it's a very like downward pulling hold energy. So you can bring a lot of those into your practice. And then um, the Sefer Haredim, the Book of the Pious, says any mitzvah that can, perform, can be performed with the legs is um, activating netzach and hod. So you can probably think of, think of a ton of those. So before we go on, let's just try, mm -hmm. try it in the body. We'll take a, a short meditation so we can bring some of that, those visualizations into the body. Let's start by finding a seat with the feet hip width distance apart and feeling the soles of the feet have contact with the ground beneath you. and bringing your consciousness 
from your mind down the body, descending further and further down into the legs, specifically that left hip and washing your awareness from the left hip over the left thigh, over the knee, down the shin and calf into that left ankle and planting firmly through that left sole of the foot. And then bringing awareness to both soles of the feet and absorbing any information from the earth below. Sensations, temperature, energy, insight from the ground. Let your feet just soak it up like it has its own brain. And bring in awareness to the breath and let's extend the exhale. And as you're extending the exhale, deepen the weight with gravity downwards. So feeling yourself get heavy, heavy in the hips, in the legs, in the feet. Feeling that downward pull all the way through the feet and visualizing in the bottom of the feet, roots growing down deeper and deeper into the realms of Hode. So there's like roots from the bottom of your feet growing, rooting you deeper into the Adama. And let those roots absorb all of the insight from the Adama. It says in Psalms, truth sprouts from the earth. So let those roots soak in wisdom from the beings that have been alive before us that are now deep in the ground. all of the wisdom that the divine created in this earth. Let your feet absorb that wisdom. And as we connect with the Adama, we may feel a softening, that soft glow of hold, sweetening and softening through the body, a wash of feeling small, a wash of humility. A relinquishing of control. And with our hearts and our eyes, just witnessing the beauty of the earth. And now that we have firmly connected to the Adama, we can open the palm, the, the eyes and the palms and open the arms like we're holding a big wide basket. So we're now available to receive, to create and hold space for a loved one in our life. So you can think about someone that maybe you haven't given enough space for and breathe open this space 
like we're widening our vessels to hold and witness another person's experience, another person's story. Feel their energy widening and yourself, your ego being removed out of this basket. Every exhale, you're clearing out yourself and creating more and more of this open sphere. Witness and hold their energy. And perhaps we can extend this to life itself. If there's places in life that we've been ignoring and not witnessing, can we open, create space to witness the beauty of life more? Where in life can we witness more? And you can release your palms and feel the soft glow of hold surrounding you and especially below you. And breathing in this ability to surrender a little bit deeper to others and to life. You can open your eyes and if anyone would like to share where in life they would like to surrender more or to whom they would like to witness more or what aspects of life you would like to witness more of, please share if you are called to. I feel like <clears throat> for me, it's infusing a little bit more hode into um, the goals of the week, which are very Netsach driven and being a little um, softer and a little um, more flexible with how that plays out, because it's very hard to like judge and assess what was accomplished and, and if it wasn't being hard on yourself. And I think how it allows a little bit more humility for the process and kindness. And so for me, that's an area I really need to infuse with more hode. Mm -hmm. I think especially in our very productive driven culture, it's very net soft driven, like go, go, goals, goals. And hold isn't as valued in our society, but hold is when like you can have the goal, but actually take a step back and just witness everything you've done and not do anything and just surrender. And it's really, um, it goes against our work load and workflow but it's a really healthy it's really what brings a healthy balance to our life and it does open up space I think for new things and better things because you trust in the process and I think sometimes the way you see it so nuts off so so focused sometimes that Gavora energy like you know that can can overtake hode is so strict and so <clears throat> rigid that you could have something better if you could just, you know, take a second to catch your breath. So right. I think it also is that more mature version of Gavora you were talking about that, you know, really allows for almost a higher level. And connected to gratitude, every single morning we say moda ani lefanecha, we thank Hashem for returning our soul back into our body. So we start our day with a hold moment. And Modet, the, the root of Modet is Hod. 
So every single morning, that's how a Jew, or that's how we're supposed to start our day is before rushing into the world of productivity, having a moment of thanks. And our sages say that we should have a hundred blessings every single day. And by seeing blessings throughout the day, we recognize the hakarat hatov, it's called, recognizing the goodness in our life. And the more we do that, the less we need to like fuel that productivity lifestyle. And we can step back and um, see the miracle in our life. And that's connected to Kislev also is a time to see the miracles in life and especially in our body and in our breath. So there's this quote from the Rebbe that when I read it to Ami, she like cried and she's like, you have to show it to everyone. Um, this is this is like taking that hold moment in the morning. And I think it's a really beautiful lesson. Do, does someone want to read it? I'd be happy to read it. I love it. <laughs> I read it every day almost. When you get up in the morning, let the world wait, defy it a little, learn something to inspire you take a few moments to meditate upon it and then you may be you may plunge ahead into the darkness full of light with which to illuminate it and i think that's so beautiful for hode and so beautiful for kislev as we you know move in that energetic um feeling of lighting up the world i think that hode energy um is the impetus for being this amazing beautiful light that you reflect onto the world so beautiful yeah I mean, it's this or waking up and right away having a hundred million things on your to-do list and jumping out and checking your phone right away and having to respond right, right away. You're plunged into that like productivity world, taking a hold moment and saying Modet Ami and thanking just God for being alive. Or if you don't want to pray to God, you can just wake up and have a moment of gratitude. It's a beautiful way to start your day. Um, also encouraging everyone this week to say their gratitude towards loved ones and also to meditate on the gratitude of your body and your breath. So that's very connected to Thanksgiving, but more so to hold. So here's a here's the teaching by Rabbi Nachman. And I thought this was very hold related because one, so he says, when a person meditates in the fields, all the grasses join in prayer and increase its effectiveness and power. So firstly, this concept of prayer being very hold related, but especially in the fields, the Adama, which is the low place of the earth. And knowing that if we go into a field and we pray that all of creation supports us in our prayers, all of the grasses, all of the flowers, all the, all of the field like directs our prayers even more. And it's also a very humbling place to pray when you're outside in the grandeur of creation and seeing the beauty around you. It creates that humility. Here's a beautiful prayer from Nishmat Kohai. You can read on your own, um, but it's a it's such a beautiful prayer of humility, and it's so this lovely. one also made me cry, Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I cried twice during that class. Yeah. yeah, we kind of touched on these, but thinking about where in life you can take a step back, letting things be, and in what ways can you soften? Where can you witness beauty in your life? And how can you practice more humility? And speaking of humility, on day five, um, we have the creation of birds and fish. Um, and according to one opinion, the angels were created on Thursday, which is day five, which is very cool. The occupation of angels is to sing praise and thanks to their creator. The fifth day of creation is also the creation of animals. Animals, like angels, have an innate humility, doing only what they were created to do. So I thought this, this idea of angels and animals being created on day five, the day of Hod, is beautiful because both, both of them exemplify humility just 
being in complete submission to like how, what they were created. They don't go against their purpose. They're just, it's very simple. Well, and I have a theory that um, dogs are angels in dog costumes. <laughs> so it's really, it's a, yeah. to me, it's, a, it's I, I think anyone who, you know, has been lucky enough to have a cat or a dog or any animal they could share a beautiful relationship with. I think to me, the gratitude of Hode, that beauty of the precious moment is so often seen in a sweet moment with an animal. Right. So this is a, the actual day five of creation. But we're told that what, what's the main difference between humans and, and angels is that angels don't have free will. And so it's almost a complete submission. They are like servants. They're, all, they're often called servants. So too much hode is like, I don't have free will. I'm just a servant to my master. And too much of that is obviously unhealthy. We need a balance of both. Um, okay, I'm going to skip. Here's more about animals and birds and day five. And I'm going to, oh yeah, we skipped one thing up here. I want to show you guys about Hode being sweet rains. Benji says this beautiful quote that in the physical world, the rain, mist, dew, fog, and rainbows with their reflective qualities and magnificent beauty represent this reflective experience. Just like the waters of the rains reflect whatever image stands before them, the hold stance of humility and deep acknowledgement of other grants one the ability to reflect a clear picture of reality or one's own self back into the world to another person. So it's the season of rain. So if it happens to rain this week, please go out and feel the rain because we're in the spirit, we're in the week of Hode. If you really don't want to get wet, you can observe the rain falling down and landing below. You can play rain sounds, or you can just visualize rains and as a visual visualization practice and absorbing their message and the beauty and their reflective quality. So that's really cool. And it's very cool that the zodiac of Kislev is the Keshet, which is the rainbow. And one short thing about the Keshet, it's, it's the rainbow, but it's also the bow and arrow. So the bow and arrow is a very Netzach code symbol, right? First you pull inwards, it's like going deep within, it's an inward focus. That's more like code of pulling in. And by doing that, we can release the arrow further and with more precision. That's like our net soft power going forward. And so the bow and arrow is a really cool symbol this month in the Sagittarius of pulling back to go propelling forward, that perfect dynamic of net soft and hone. Is anyone a um, Sagittarius or Kislev child? Anyone? Um, okay, let's move on to uh, the pomegranate. We, we haven't really touched upon the species so much, but we thought it'd be great to bring in the species so that if you want to bring in hold this week, you can simply make a pomegranate salad. You can put pomegranate into your cooking more just as a conscious way of bringing in hold. So we thought that was very um, fitting. And hold, it means majesty also. And you can see just the majesty of these pomegranates. It's very majestic. Also, it connects to the immune system. Hold is connected to the immune system and pomegranates really boost the immune system. So if you open a pomegranate, you can see the Magen David star, which is the shield of David. And I do this, whenever I do star poles, I call it the Magen David pose um, because it is, it is said to be 
from the shape of the pomegranate. That's like where the Magen David came, came from is from the Star of David, which, which is like the shield of David. And I think this idea of a shield is very hode related because it's very inward focused. And um, it sometimes we have to like protect ourselves from the external influences that may be harmful to us. There's a lot about the pomegranate research and how it's connected to the three angels. The Magen David stands for the acronym of the angels. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can bring in the pomegranate into, into your week. So another very hold visual is the one of crystals and precious gems. So the shepherd of Hod is Aaron, the high priest. And not only did Aaron have pomegranates on his robe, by the way, which is very awesome because he's the archetype of Hod, but he also had the breastplate of all of the 12 gemstones. And they, they're very Hod, they're, they're very Hod related because they shine with unique properties. They come from the earth and they reflect an energetic property. So for example, the, the stone of Kislev is the Achlema, which is right here. Um, this is the violet purple stone and the root of Achlema is Cholom, which means dreams. And not only is it from the earth, so it has that humble um, quality of code, but it also shines with the properties of the zodiac above it reflects above. It reflects the state of dreams this month. It reflects the push of sleep this month and all of the properties of um, Kislev, it's held in the stone. So I thought it would be a, an interesting time during Hod to learn about the gemstones of the Torah or choose a crystal that brings you a sense of um, trust or security or a stone that you connect to and bring it with you through the day. You can set it on your desk or by your yoga mat, or, um, or if you can wear one around your neck, it's a nice way to literally just like wear hold throughout the day. And here's a little bit about our own. So he was the high High priest says he glowed with the soft glow of Hod. And although he had a lot of spiritual goals, what makes him so special is that he was able to surrender to Moshe. He was able to um, be humble and reflect Moshe's Torah and let the power and the brilliance of Moshe reflect through him. So he really represents Hod. And he was also all about peace. So you see in Pir Kiyavo, it says, be of the disciples of our own, a lover and pursuer of peace, one who loves all creatures and draws them close to Torah. So sometimes when we need to create peace, we have to release our ego and remove ourselves and not think about ourselves for the sake of peace. And that is a very cold um, property to be able to Remove your ego for the sake of something greater. And this is also yeah. very old um, from Tanya. It says, Aaron loved even those who were devoid of any merit, those whose only redeeming factor was the fact that they were creatures, God's creations. And I think what Aaron um, reflected with his humility affected everyone. So even someone who was a sinner or someone who had evil ways was so impacted by Aaron's reflection that it made them almost think about their own behavior or change their behavior because the power of what he was reflecting into the world was so impactful. And I think that's just a beautiful thing to think about with the reflective quality of Hode is it's not just what we want to reflect, but how that impacts others and inspires and uplifts. Yep. And this last one, 
It says, then Moses said to Aaron, this is what God spoke. I will be sanctified through those near to me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron was silent. And I think that silence really shows his ability to remove himself. And whereas like voicing your opinion is netzach, sometimes being silent and holding back is a state of hod. And even with the pomegranates, the Zohar teaches that but when the pomegranates would like on Aaron's robe, they would ring the bell. In a way, it was a form of sound healing. The, the bells were, there was a lot about the sound of the bells. And there was different meaning when there was a bell and versus when the pomegranates were silent. So we all have that choice in any conversation to remain silent, to kind of put our opinion aside or when to speak up and when to fight for something strong. And that's the same with the bow and arrow. There's a time to retreat, coming into and being the rainbow of peace. And there's a time to use our like bow and arrow and to fight and be victorious and stand up for our values. So it's kind of a, um, through life, we have to find our own balance. So the color of code is dark pink. I could not get a dark pink on tonight, but try to wear dark pink, write in dark pink, visualize dark pink. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. And code in terms of um, types of light is called the radiant light. Radiant light, which is where radiant emanations comes from. Um, Ami and I have a website called Radiant Emanations, and it's because we loved this sphere of Hod so much. And we thought like, there's not so much of this soft humbleness and gratitude and um, this like soft approach in the world. And I think the Jewish woman and the Jewish approach is very connected to Hod and the world needs more of that. So yeah, um, we're, we are out of time for the, Avi, for the shepherdess, but if you would like to learn more about her, I have a really cool article about her and Avigal. She was just very dedicated to peace and she did what she could to create peace in the world. So I think it's a good week to try to create some peace in our relationships, in our home, and um, kind of remove our needs aside and surrender a little bit more to the greater good. It's harder said than done. And the angel of Hod is Nuriel. So we can summon this angel. He's the guard guardian of the indwelling light within. He, um, in the Magen, the word from again, shield of David, he's the represented by the nun, um, Nuriel, and the pomegranate, it says in the Zohar, originates in Hod and is the word the same as the, the same numerical value as Nuriel. So it's connected to the pomegranate and to Hod, and it's very, very cool and mystical. But really, it's good to know that we have angels on our side, protecting us. We can summon them. We can ask for things. They're here to help us. And if we want specifically support in surrendering, in softening, and in gratitude and humility, we can call upon the angel Nuriel to help us. So we're going to move to Ami. It's going to do a yoga flow. For yes, on Hode. I was going to do gratitude, but it ended up, I was so inspired by Hode that it it's more Hode with gratitude, but with, with all elements of Hode. So whoever would like to stay, you're welcome. Um, of course, it's been an hour, so if anyone needs to leave, totally go ahead. It will be recorded. Um, but what's nice about these flows is Ami kind of integrates it. It's so much information, and I'm so sorry. I feel like it's way too much information. Um, but I really like want you to get the whole spectrum and then be able to integrate through the week on your own and with other supports, but there's so much beauty in it. So I want us to share as much as possible 
I'm sorry if it's overwhelming or a lot. I think what Ami does really beautifully is integrates it nicely into a embodied yoga practice. So if you can stay, please do so. And otherwise have a beautiful week of Hode. And I bless us all with this soft glow. And Jenna, I'm going to get set up and then just make sure my mic is working and then I will start the yoga. Okay. Okay, Jenna, I'm gonna test the mat and have you just confirm that you can hear me well and see me well. Yes. Do I need a scoot back at all? You're, you're good. Okay, good. Well, let's start our, our flow and hoed. And I thought it would be nice to start standing and actually getting to know our mat and, and the earth below us. So stepping right with our netzach and left with our hode, and then just beginning to feel the earth below our feet as we rock back and forth with softness between our feet and imagining the rain falling from the clouds and heavens above and the dew and the mist on the ground below us and the enchanting beautiful atmosphere surrounding our mat so that when we sit down to start our practice, we're in the enchantment of Hode. So let's get started then, seated in our enchanted forest of Hode and begin to rock back and forth and feel this pull from the earth, gently pulling you to the right, and gently pulling you to the left and feel supported by Hashem because below represents the support of Hashem that is with us at all times. So we never fall because we're always, always supported. And then let's rock forward into a child's pose. Let your hips sink as your arms reach forward. Feeling that beautiful energy towards the earth, feeling so supported. And then cat the spine as we gently let the hips soften into the mat. Feel that rock of the hips letting everything melt into the earth. And then pull the hips back into child's pose, letting the forehead and the heart become one with the earth. Let's do that two more times, catting the spine as we let the hips sink into the mat and then pulling the hips back into child's pose. One last time, just like that. Feel the spine rounding and then releasing as we allow ourselves to feel the support of the earth. And then let's pull our hips back as we tuck the toes into down dog. And take a moment here to look at your feet and actually see the balance between Netzach and Hode. Every time you push the right ankle down, you're in the world of Netzach and the left ankle down is the world of Hode. And think about that perfect balance that we talked about in our class and how you can incorporate that into your life. Inhale, let's lift the right leg up and sweep it through to warrior one, planting the left foot into the earth 
as we rise that up, reaching the fingertips up to the heavens above. Clasp your hands behind you and gently let your body release into the mat. Surrender. Feel the humility that you can bring into your life and think about where you can bring that humility. Where are you holding on to too much netza? And let that course through your body so that when we rise back up, we're bringing it into our life. And let's do that two more times, releasing, bowing down, feeling the humility, feeling the sensation of letting go of so much rigidity, and then gently lift back up. Last time, feel the heart reaching forward to the ground as we allow ourselves to feel humility. And then cartwheel the arm into warrior two and let the pelvis sink down. Feel the strength in your pelvis as you remain soft in the legs and soft in your arms. You still have so much strength. And then we will inhale, lengthening our right leg as we sweep the left arm over, creating a rainbow. The beautiful rainbows of Hode. And we'll come back to warrior two and do that two more times, reaching up and over with the left arm into a modified triangle, creating a beautiful rainbow. The gratitude in our life, all of the things in our life that bring us joy, Think of that as you reach forward, drawing your beautiful rainbow into your modified triangle. And then let your body lean forward, both feet to the side of the mat as you release into a forward fold. And I want you to lift your heart up onto your hands and gaze into a beautiful puddle of rain and see what is reflected back at you. What are you reflecting into the world? And what do you wanna change about that? Is there anything you would like to reflect differently? Let your head dip back down as you bring your right arm up into a twist, shining your heart up to the sky, gently back down to center. Sweep the left arm up to the left side of the room feeling a beautiful twist, release. Let's walk back to the front of the mat, stepping into plank pose, letting your hands and your feet ground, lifting you with all of the support and then pull the hips back into down dog. Looking back at your feet again as we pedal, feeling the beautiful balance between Netzach and Hode. And on your inhale, lift the, lift the left leg up and bring it through into warrior one, reaching the fingertips up to the sky, sinking the hips, and then gently clasp the hands behind you. Heart reaching forward as you allow your body to melt into the mat, feeling humility, feeling softness, gratitude, and then reach back up and let's do that two more times, letting your body dip into humility, gratitude, lifting back up, feel the heart lengthen and expand. It's as if every time you dip down, you're filling your heart with so much love and light that that soft glow is shining everywhere around you. Last time, lifting back up, and then we'll sweep our arm open into warrior two. And as you extend the left leg, create your beautiful rainbow of light into modified triangle. And we'll repeat that twice, thinking of this beautiful pink soft glow surrounding you as we create rainbows of gratitude around us. What are you grateful for? Think of it as you draw these beautiful rainbow circles. And then we'll sweep down back into our forward fold, 
let the head dip down to the mat. And this time, walk both hands to the right leg and let the left arm grab the right leg as you bend the left knee and gently rock your hips forward, creating a wonderful stretch along the left side of the body. Take an inhale here and an exhale, and then let that go as we walk back to the middle of the mat. This time walk both hands over to the left side, grabbing the left leg with both arms, but letting the right arm have a greater reach so that when you bend your right knee and pull forward, you can heighten the stretch on the right side of the body. And then we can let that go. We'll walk back to the top of the mat. And at, the, and at this point, I would come down to the mat so that we can have some side swoops into the world of hoes. So lifting the left arm up and over, let the body release as it swoops forward. And let's do that two more times, dipping into humility. One last time, feeling your heart melt every time you go through the center. And then let's do that to the left, reaching the right arm up and over, letting the body circle through the mat. Two more times. Letting the body release and relax. Last time. And then we'll walk back up to the top of our mat and take your left leg back into a curtsy lunge. And as you step forward with the left leg, you'll extend it and then let it float back into a warrior three as you dip into a pond of gratitude. And then bring your foot back to the mat, step back with the right leg this time into our curtsy lunge. And as you bring the right foot forward, extend it and let it sweep back into a pool of gratitude. And every time we do this, and we'll do it two more times, dip into gratitude, let your body be encompassed by it, feel all of the places in your life where you have gratitude and also where you'd like to infuse more gratitude. Sweeping that left leg back, dipping into gratitude. Feet meet at the top of the mat, right leg back. Think about who in your life needs more gratitude and how can you show them this gratitude throughout the week? One last time, dipping forward and then meeting back at the top of the mat and reach both arms up to the sky. And as if you are the rain, let your body fall down to the mat with the rain. Let this rain wash through you as we rise up, lifting into Netzach, feeling the rain of Hode, and let it wash you. One last time, lifting up, feeling the rains of Hode, and thinking of all the glory and all of the gratitude in your life. And then we'll meet at the top of the mat, rolling up, shifting your weight to the right leg. Sweep the left leg over the right and the left arm under the right arm into eagle pose. You can kickstand the foot or you can try to wrap it around. And on our next inhale, we'll gently rock the body forward, humbling ourselves into this pose. Then lifting back up gently to eagle, unravel and shake it out a little bit. And then we'll gently grab the left foot as we move into dancer's pose. Feel the beautiful expansion of the chest and the length of your spine as you reach forward with your right hand and kick back with your left foot thinking of the hode energy pulsating through your entire body. <laughs> I love Let's you. release, shifting to the left leg, letting your right leg wrap around the left and your right arm under the left arm. Gently kickstand the foot or wrap it if it's more comfortable for you and dip down into humility. 
into grace and let yourself feel that envelop you. And as you rise up, feel your heart shining forward, reflecting this beautiful light around you. Let's unravel. You can shake it out a little bit and shift to the left leg as you grab the right leg, kicking back into the right palm. Feel your body expanding as you reach the left arm forward, kicking the right leg into the right palm, expanding your heart, shining your light, reflecting throughout the world. Let's step back and meet in the center, sweeping the arms up. One last time, letting the body dip down and then step back onto all fours and gently allow yourself to lay down on the mat and feel your entire body melting into the mat. This is the most humbling place, the lowest place on the mat, the lowest place that we can be to the earth. And think about the lowest points of your life. And yet you got through them because you had gratitude and you had trust and you had support. And sometimes those low places open up space for creating better opportunities in our life, better relationships. So give yourself a moment here to feel the mat and to let yourself be in that place as uncomfortable as it can be and let yourself know that no matter what you do or where you're going, Hashem is always there with you and everything is exactly as it should be. Take another breath here, feeling supported. And then we'll gently rise back up, sweeping our legs in front of us for a seated twist, taking the left leg over the right as you wrap the right arm around the left leg, gazing behind you. Feel the navel pull into your spine as you look behind your right shoulder feeling the twist and length. Let's release that, bringing the right foot to the left leg as you extend the arms upward, reaching forward, letting the hamstring stretch as your body melts into the left leg. The fifth day of creation is associated with angels and animals. And angels uh, are, are animals, and so I think that it's a, a beautiful way of acknowledging the gift and humility that animals have and the gift they are in our lives and the gratitude that we have for them. Let's switch sides. Lengthen the right leg as you cross the left leg over. Actually, the right leg over. Wrap the left arm around as you twist and gaze behind your right shoulder feeling your body lengthening from crown to tail. Pull the navel to spine, gazing behind yourself. On the next inhale, let's release that, lengthening the right leg out, bringing in the left foot to meet the inseam of the right leg, lifting up to the sky and allowing your body to melt forward. On your inhale, feel the body lengthen, and on your exhale, release. And take a moment here to think of where you can open up space in your life to create more miracles, to create more opportunities to put your dreams and goals in action, especially as we move towards peace, love, and we're in the month of light. Think of where you can create some softness and flexibility to infuse your body with this light. Let's go ahead and bring both feet to the ground, planting them into the mat as we roll back into a, uh, a bow pose. Feel your arms reaching down into the mat as you lift your hips up. Feel the spine lengthening and feel the energy from the mat, the energy from the earth pulling you up as if it's almost creating a force beneath you that's helping to lift your hips and your stomach up to the sky. 
Feel that gentle opening and the power below you lifting you up. And let's release that. Let's do that one more time, pressing our feet and our arms into the mat as we lift the hips up, as if the mat has its own energy that's carrying us up towards the heavens. Last time, release. Let your knees go side to side, feeling a nice stretch on the low back. Take a few breaths. Shoe side, sweep them both ways. And then let's gently lengthen out the legs and the arms and allow yourself to be held and supported by the mat. And think of this enchanting force that we've created of all of the beauty in your life and all of the gratitude that we've dipped into and the beautiful rains that have washed us pure and take that energy into your week and carry that soft glow with you wherever you go and imagine that you are this, this beautiful dark pink light and that you are bringing humility and softness to all of your interactions and to all of your relationships and that you are changing and reflecting back this beautiful, magical gift that is you as you go throughout your week. Gently roll over to the right side into a ball and push yourself up back to seated. And let's take one big inhale together, inhaling all of this beautiful hoed energy that we've created and exhaling it out. Thank you so much. And I hope you carry this beautiful energy of Hode with you with every step that you take throughout the week and that it brings a soft glow to everything that you do. Thank you, Ami. You're that welcome. Hold on, let me turn. Let's see. Is it just us? There. <laughs> hey, Cindy, how are you? I can't tell who anybody is at first. That was beautiful. Thank you. There were other people here too that just left. Oh, okay, um, good. I'm so glad they were yeah. able to stay. It was so nice. I um, yeah, I loved, I loved it, everything. Well, there was so much for Hode. I felt like um, Hode had a lot of information. Yeah. And Cindy, <laughs> radiant emanations really did come out of Hode. That was the one for Jenna and I that was like so powerful that really gave us the idea of like creating this, this beautiful like platform for people to come to have yoga videos and to have guidance. Um, and one of the things that we're doing that we're, we're working on, but it ultimately will have like ways to almost like tools to live your life every month that mm -hmm. um, help bring in these different attributes in a way that you can really incorporate into your life because there is so much content and it's like you learn it and then it's in and out and we really want it to become embodied. And so little things like even the pomegranate, like making a salad or, you know, thinking of when you're praying, like looking down, like, you know, remembering to look down with your eyes. And so taking all of these different attributes and simplifying it into a model that people can follow after they've learned it, it's easier, but there'll be information and content available for people who haven't experienced it before. But that's really the whole idea is like, how do I embody this, not just on the map, but like in my life? And how do I take that gift into all of my interactions in a way that is um, doable, that's easy and doable? I so think that, it's that's my, yeah, it's our yeah. inspiration. <laughs> I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. I, um, it's just like all of these pieces are just sort of falling into place. Yes. And, oh my um, gosh. God, I just, I just love it. Like this was, this was a beautiful few hours for me, you know, combining Kislev with Hode. And I also have, I didn't have as much time today to look and look at the manual before the learning. Um, for Hode, I, you know, only have yes. like a bit of time in between, but for the way I've been doing this is I've been trying to look at the manuals prior to the lecture. And um, then I'm able to get so much more really out of the lecture. And, um, 
I just, it, it just lands with me. It really does. Oh, well, and there's so that. much overlap. Yeah. And, and I, I always, I mean, I totally in awe that Jenica does two back to back, but, and I'm in awe that you can do it too, but mm -hmm. I feel like the overlap for me has been really powerful of the months, um, like the yoga course and then the seafro, because so much of it does overlap and it's incredible when you are learning them both, when you start integrating them, it's like, it opens up so much, like just so many possibilities and how to live your life more fully. And it's, to me, it's like a beautiful guidebook to, you know, help direct your energy that's aligned, you know, with our ancestors, with the, with our calendar. And I don't know, it just, it's really transformed my life and um, really helped provide like a guidebook of like how to like keep my energy in check. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. You know, a year ago when I started this class in the, the 12 month um, yoga course was in October and I have totally shifted. And now I feel like I live lunarly, but spirally. Wow. Um, yes. Because yes. Rob yes. Pinson, I read Rob Pinson's book, Jenna. So I like, I <laughs> love that whole concept of the circle and the linearity and the spirality mm -hmm. of everything. But then I also love this idea of living lunarly. And last week you talked about um, the moon cycle and it just, it just so lands with me. And now that I'm learning about the Seferot, um on a much deeper level, and there is this book, I don't think I have it on my nightstand. There, there is this Seferot book. Um, I'll take a picture of it, Jenna, and I'll send it to you through through WhatsApp that I have been reading that was recommended actually to me by Shari um, Magnus. Oh, yeah. um, that, that, that's, I have to go see if I have it on my, just a sec, I'll be right back. <laughs> Jenna, I was so sad I missed the yoga class this morning. It's okay, your this class is, it. is amazing. Well, I can't wait to take yours. Oh, what is Girl that? And the self. Oh, and, and so this book, The Sephiros and the Self, A Divine Blueprint for Self-Discovery and Personal Growth is by Rabbi Yaakov Feder. And so anyway, I've been reading this. Um, I had started it before this course, and then I've been going back. It really is. Um, it, it's just an interesting kind of read. It, it, it's a little bit more applicable to your life skills if you're lacking hode in maybe the way you conduct your business and then they tie it in with um with stories from torah related to hode oh, and, wow. and it's lacking so it could be lacking any of the sefer wrote you know starting from the beginning even talking um initially if you have you know this great concept but you have the inability to execute it but then you have the knowledge the dot to bring it all together. And so that's the way they approach all of that, you know, tying everything back through the center. Once you're, once you're left, once you're right, left, and then how to, how to bring it together into, um, you know, into balance into whether it's not action into being, depending upon where you are top to bottom. Um, oh, that's brilliant. So that's rate, so helpful. So any rate, it's, it's, it's psychology. Just, yeah. yeah, it's the and, and I just I just feel like it all it all just it all just lands with me. And then um that cosmic cube <laughs> it just it's really so powerful. Oh my gosh. I think and, and, it'd be really yes, like and with your yoga flows, like just thinking of, you know, at the end, like kind of the grand finale of all of it, you know, how to bring it together so that you know people can experience like stepping forward, stepping to the side, stepping back, you know, almost how all of that rising up, being down, you know, I was almost playing with it. Um, because I, 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 have, I have an instructor, a mentor of mine who has helped me to, and helped many of us to think about our flows relative to creating this balance. So if we, if we twist to the right, we twist to the left, and then we come back through neutral again. If we are if we are rising and then lowering, you know, all about maintaining that balance, whether it's through a, a twist, whether it's through a lift and a descent, looking at all the three planes in the body, 
Um, yes. That has not been, you know, it, Jewishly, it's just looking at it from the physiology of yoga and looking about your the three pains of your body, top, bottom, left, right, front, back. But when you take that and you infuse that now with the Seferot and that cube. It's so powerful. <laughs> it's incredible. Crazy powerful. And then as I'm also delving into chakras and all of those yes. energies, and I lay all of that now on all of these Seferot it's like, I mean, exactly. I, well, and it's the same, you know, I've studied that. So that was originally my, my first training was with, you know, all of this, you know, chakras and really into like the different systems and Ayurveda and, yes. you know, and I'm also and, learning, I'm yes. also now learning about Ayurveda because I'm starting to do some retreats with a girlfriend and anyway, so, so that whole, everything about self-realization and self-healing and self-actualization and yeah, it's, it's incredible. And it's just such a different way to connect that um, I, to me is so powerful. It's really transformed the way that I feel when I do yoga and um, has helped me bring it off the mat, which I think is the key. You know, it's so easy to feel good, like for an hour when you're doing yoga, but it's like, how do you bring that awareness into your daily interactions? It, I mean, because it, it really in a perfect world, it wouldn't be so um, bifurcated, it would be like, I can really experience it fully in my mat, but that's just the impetus to bring it into the world. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, it's like trying to like, even just like how you walk, like walking, you know, it, you know, it, it's almost like just the, the, the right left, like, how are you walking? Is it soft? Is it, is it aggressive? You know, just watching yourself throughout the day with that energy. And, and I think if doing so everything with um, intention and purpose and mindfulness is um and and then not only when you do it on the mat because you know your transitions are poses themselves and yes. your breath but everything related to going from this crazy you know net sock world of of sympathetic nervous system just fight and flight right yes. and then balancing that with the parasympathetic which is like the hode aspect yes Yes, totally. Exactly. And hode is harder for most of us. I think, you know, Jenny, you were saying that it's really like, we need to bring more hode in the world. And I think in our society, Netzach and Gabora are so like, um, you know, th those are qualities that people really like value and being softer and, um, you know, almost even more hesed isn't as desirable because it's seen as maybe not like work, 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 busy, busy, busy. And so I think just showing that you can be all of these things and seeing how it transforms all of your relationships and interactions is what the world needs more of. And I mean, so it, we, it, we oh, need, so we need to do more yin. We need to do more. Yes. Yin oh gosh. So and much more so yin. It's hard for us to rest in stillness and silence and solitude. And I'm also into the like whole Enneagram thing on the side too. I love all of that and understand. Oh, I haven't found that yet. <laughs> I, that I, I, I understand. That. Yet. I, I, I like that too. But, but to be able to use your breath to connect mm. your mind with your heart and your body, and then to go even deeper with that awareness to your soul is, is like super powerful. Well, and that's where you find your true self. I think that's really that spark. That's when you actually connect to your uniqueness, to your spark. And I think that's like the key. I think when we're so disconnected from our body and our spark, we're just living externally driven and it's a really hard place to be. And, you know, and I it's just, a hard I just, place. I just left that behind me. <laughs> like I just did that for 50 something years. <laughs> and now, well, congratulations for getting out. <laughs> Only since the pandemic have I like shifted. I even loved last week and I have this, you know, whole vision thing coming up, a workshop, you know, where you look behind us and we, yes, we acknowledged our past, but we but you move forward. Yeah. We moved forward. You know, it's just all of exactly. those beautiful things. Anyway, I know Jenna, it's late there. You want to go to sleep. I'm, I've got still some kids here from out of town. Um, I just wanted oh to say gosh. that this is, this conversation still recorded because I was recording the Zoom and I'm so happy about it. Cause I was gonna be like, wow, that, what you said was really brilliant and I wish everyone could hear it. And whoever's watching this conversation is very lucky because it's right. like um, one of the well, best gems I think 
of our Spiro insight from Ami and I's exploration has come through just this informal conversation. And um, I would love to add to the manual, like the parasympathetic as hold. I never really thought, yeah. I never put that together. And I think that's a really, a really great analogy. Yeah. Oh, I think so too. Oh my gosh. Well, it was so beautiful. And I'm going to do the Keith love later. <laughs> so later in the day. At any rate, thank you. I next oh I'm gosh. in Sedona. I'm in Sedona next week. So I'm not going to be live. I'm going to be doing a vortex um experience. Wow. Oh, fun though. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I so I'll that. but I'll be back for Mahout. Okay, yay. Good. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a beautiful weekend and we'll miss you and we'll think of you as we uh, as we do the class next week. Yeah. But you'll Have be missed. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.